but it's, it's a relentless pressure that every day you've got to make progress before time beats you. Now as an investor, I mean, you have companies in your portfolio that are billion dollar companies. What are the ingredients to a billion dollar company? It starts with a breakthrough, an idea that really nobody has thought of that will change things dramatically, make basically create a way of doing things that's 10 or 100 times better than the old one. The problem, first of all, is if you have an idea like that, people are going to think you're really stupid because they won't understand it. Because if they understood it, they would have already started the company. When a company comes in to pitch you, how do you see that? I mean, is it possible to define the entrepreneurs that will create those companies? One, um, we look for leadership. So does the entrepreneur have the ability to get people to follow? Because if she doesn't have that, um, then there's really no chance she can succeed because no great companies were ever built by one person. And then secondly, is there something that we call founder market fit? So has this founder spent their entire life, do they have to build this company? Not do they want to build it, do they have to build this company? Because like they literally can't breathe if this company doesn't exist. The last element is, is just courage. Like are you willing to do things? Are you willing to have people not like you? Are you willing to have people think you're stupid? Are you willing to uh, stand out rather than fit in? And that is, um, it just turns out to be a very rare quality in life. You wrote that as a CEO, at some point you just almost wanted to die. What is that feeling like? How can you get so low? You kind of start the company, you, you're all fired up. You've got this exciting idea. You convince everybody that you can who you really respect to join you and join the company. And you've all got them and you tell them the whole time how great it's gonna be. And then you get yourself into a situation where like things are not that great. Um, in fact, they're really bad and they start degenerating and then people in the company notice they're bad and they start quitting. So your entire life is a company. Everybody you know is connected to the company and the company is going to fail. Like it's hard to describe how bad a feeling that is, but it's, it's a very bad feeling. Ben, one thing that stood out to me when I was reading your book, something that kind of defined how I look at you as an entrepreneur and maybe an investor, is when your now wife turned you, uh, stood you up on your first date and how you handled that. Yeah, that, that is a funny story. Well, she was supposed to meet at 7.30. We were gonna get together and then, you know, one hour passed and two hours passed and then I called um, and it was a blind date. And I said, you know, when are you getting here? And she's like, well, I'm not coming. And I was like, okay, that was an okay answer an hour ago or two hours ago but not like two hours after you're supposed to be here you have to come like we already made dinner like this you would be like totally that, in that the, the, yeah. To the date. yeah i was like you know it's your moral obligation either you're a bad person or you will come at this point there's no way you could stand me up now and amazingly she came so that was that was probably the the um, best thing that i ever did in my whole life